The results of this study matter because we're going through a huge lighting revolution at the moment. Almost overnight we've turned from old-fashioned orange lights to bright white LEDs. And everybody is a user of light, so it's important to everyone. At the moment we're just scratching the surface with research, we're finding out how these LEDs may be affecting human health. But we still really don't know how they're affecting wildlife. How do they affect ecosystem services, things like decomposition and pollination, things that we currently take for granted from nature? We really need a lot more research in this field. Hi, I'm Dr Andy Wakefield. I'm a teacher here in the School of Biological Sciences at the University of Bristol. I'm also the lead author on a recently published paper in the journal Ecology and Evolution, which investigates whether LED lighting attracts fewer insects than conventional light types. This study came about several years ago. I first started working within the Bats and Lighting Research Project here at the University of Bristol. And from that, I developed my own ideas for investigating how light pollution was affecting insects. We managed to get a grant from the Natural Environment Research Council to fund a three-year PhD looking at how LEDs are affecting insects. This PhD was a sort of a broad umbrella and encompassed a few mini topics, one of which ended up being a collaboration with Integral LED. They provided some extra expertise, a bit of funding and some equipment to help investigate how LED lighting is affecting insects. So we conducted the research study back in the summer of 2014. We were interested in looking at insect attraction to four different types of domestic lights. We looked at two LED bulbs, a cool white LED and a warm white LED, as well as a traditional tungsten filament light and a modern compact fluorescent two. And we took these lights out to 18 field sites around the southwest of England. And we set them up in the field attached to an insect trap. We turned the lights on at sunset and off at sunrise and then collected the insect samples beneath each light for later analysis. So over the summer we caught about 4,000 insects from all of our sites and they were brought back to the lab here at Bristol and very painstakingly identified down to order and family level. We caught lots of flies, we caught moths, we caught beetles, hemiptera and bugs too. And we found that overall the LEDs attracted about four times fewer insects than the traditional tungsten filament lights and about half as many as the modern compact fluorescents. Now of those flies that we caught, we caught about 400 of one particular family called the Ceratobigonidae and all of these were identified further down to genus level, a particular genus called Culicoides. Now these a lot of people will know as being pests and uh, annoying biting flies up in Scotland. Um, but they have a much more serious angle to them as well. They're important vectors of many diseases. And what's really interesting about our results is that we found that 80% of those biting midges were attracted to the traditional filament light, about 15% were attracted to the compact fluorescent, and only 2% were attracted to the cool white LED and 3% to the warm white LED. So what really stood out within the findings for me is that there was no difference in insect attraction to the cool white and the warm white LEDs. Now this is somewhat surprising because we know that insect vision is short wavelength shifted, so they shouldn't be as good at detecting longer wavelength or kind of orange red light. But we didn't find any difference in attraction between the two lights. What's also surprising is quite how many insects were attracted to the tungsten filament light. We're not sure the reason behind this, but it could be something to do with the amount of heat being given off by that light. We know, for instance, that lots of biting midges can use thermal cues for detecting hosts, so perhaps that heat being given off by the light had some influence in attracting quite so many insects. Our research is in agreement with lots of other research that has taken place around the world in recent years. However, there are some studies in the literature that conflict. From our results, we have concluded that of the lights we tested, LEDs attract significantly fewer insects. I definitely think there's a need for further research in this area. By the end of the decade, about 70% of all lights are predicted to be LEDs. And we're pretty keen to embrace the energy savings that LEDs can offer us. But actually, we know very little about what impacts they may have on things like ecosystem services and on human health. I mean, for instance, we caught about 400 culicoides biting midges in our study, and these are known to be important vectors of animal diseases. 
In other regions of the world, in more tropical climes, you get things like mosquitoes, which are vectors for things like Zika virus and for malaria, and these have a direct threat on human health. So yes, I think further research in this area is vital.